I'm Liz Sumner, and this is I Always Wanted To, the podcast where I interview people who are doing things that others long to do. What have you always wanted to try? My guest today is Siobhan Colgan. Siobhan is a writer who writes and edits articles, white papers, and books for female entrepreneurs, coaches, and creatives. She's also a book midwife, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Welcome, Siobhan. Hello, Liz. Uh, Lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And so tell me, uh, tell me about being a a book midwife. What's that? Well, it's kind of like, as you would assume, I work with people to help them birth the books that are inside of them. Mm. Wow, that's a great service. (laughs) What what kind of people do you work with? Um, Well, I've worked with both men and women, um, both male and female writers in the past, but now I primarily work with uh, female entrepreneurs or business owners, creatives and coaches, and these can be people who are at the start of their um, new careers or who have been making jewellery or been on a creative path for a while and they want to write a book about what they do. Ah, okay. So it's more often it's like nonfiction rather than than somebody who's going to write the great American novel. Yes, it's it, like I said, it's primarily with people who are on the entrepreneurial path and they want okay. a book to support the work that they're doing. Ah, okay, great. Um, and and so, how did you feel um, called to do this work? Well, um. I guess I felt it was really important to to start acknowledging female entrepreneurs, uh, you know, voice in the world and their vision in the world. I actually do think that women have a different way of working. Um, We generally bring our whole selves into work. And by that, I mean our different life responsibilities, be that our children, our partners, maybe our aging parents. Mm. And over the decades, even though... um, you know, more and more women have needed and wanted and been allowed to enter into the workplace. Those responsibilities, particularly the ones at home, they haven't lessened. So how do we bring our best selves to work and to our home lives? Often we do that by working different hours, job sharing, part-time work, all of that. And that is the different way we have of working. Um, and, And I think also, Liz, what's happened more recently is that more and more women, like you and I, Mm -hmm. have started to create new forms of working that meld all of these facets of who we are with our work life. And so we move through the hours of our day in a way that enables us to be to be kind of fully present in all those aspects of our life. And we don't apologize anymore for being mothers or partners Mm -hmm. or or carers, as I said, you know, because a lot of people are caring for their aging parents or or have other responsibilities in that way. Mm -hmm. So what has all this got to do with book writing, right? Well, (laughs) Well, as an entrepreneur, if you're setting out on this road, what do you do? You generally start looking to others for help, right? And one of the first things you do is you pick up a book. You pick up a book and you start reading books upon books about different people who have done the thing that you want to do, who have walked the path that you want to walk. But there aren't that many books out there written by female entrepreneurs who have done this, who have, who are working in this new way. So that's what I want to do. I want to help these women to form a platform to write about how they are working even if it, if it's about you know the difficulties and the challenges they have to write all of that so that other women who are out there who want to walk the same path have something to read and go oh my gosh look this person has done that and they're showing me how I can do it or they're talking about the difficulties that I've been feeling that's really what it's all about wow what a great mission yeah <laughs> thank you tell me about the people that you work with and what, what's holding them back from doing this on their own? Well, I actually think it's, it's fear. Fear is holding them back. Mm-hmm. Um, it's certainly what holds me back in so many things that I do in my work. And mm-hmm. I find that it's, it's with a lot of the women that I work with, it's fear, it's fear of visibility. And um, that's a big one for women. It's fear of being ridiculed, mm-hmm. um, particularly by the people who, you know, who are in your life already. Um, it's the fear of failure as well. You know, you, you set out in this big mission 
and you know I'm going to write a book and then you you don't because life is so difficult to manage or there's so many balls up in the air that you're juggling um you know the the book project just falls by the wayside so I think it's um Fear is the main thing that, that holds people back and it manifests itself in different ways. What are some things that you do to help a person get over those kinds of, of issues? Well, I mean, one of the first things I do is to, to suggest that people just start small. You know, it's, I think when you look at the idea of writing a book, you think, oh my goodness, that's such a huge project. I will never get it done. I, you know, it's, and all of a sudden it overwhelms, you know, and, and the idea of it, you know, just becomes too big to, to handle even in your own mind. So mm-hmm. start small, you know, and start with your mindset. Start with knowing that, that you can write a book. Everybody can write a book. And, and, you know, what I do with my clients is I start by saying, well, why do you want to write it? What, what positive things will you gain from writing a book? How will it make you feel? And I suggest often that they put together a vision board, that they affirm to themselves, you know, why their ideas are important, why they should have their voice out in the world. And you know what I do every month? I, I do something and I still do it. I make a list of everything I've accomplished in terms of my writing projects. And sometimes that list is two pages long. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not even half a page, mm-hmm. but it's a list. And even if I've only accomplished three things that I'm proud and grateful for that month, it's three things. So, you know, start, start small and, and start by, like I said, start with your mindset. Start by realizing that this is possible for you. That's brilliant. That, uh, I, I, I acknowledge you for, for noticing um, your accomplishments. I think that's a huge piece in, in feeling good about yourself and, and in being mm. productive is to take stock of what you have accomplished rather than, as many people do, just what they haven't accomplished. Um, yeah. And I think the point that you just made there, Liz, I mean, it, it really does help your productivity. Mm-hmm. If you can kind of go, oh, my gosh, I did that. Oh, and I wrote this. And I, you know, I managed to write a paragraph about this. And I really like that paragraph. You know, you, it then motivates you to move forward. So it's, it really does help with your productivity as well. Yep, I agree. Um, so in what stage um, are the writing projects of the people who come to you generally? Do they, do they have something or they just have, have the notion that they'd like to write or wh- where are they? Um, they're at different stages. I have one client that I'm currently working with and she came to me because she had finished her first draft and it was, um, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. She's a graphic designer and she's writing about um, how she, uh, just a new way of approaching graphic design branding. So she came to me with her first draft because she had written it and then it was, okay, now what? Mm-hmm. Because as far as she, she was concerned, everything she had in her you know, that she knew about was there on the pages and she didn't know how to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I worked with her to kind of structure it a little bit better to look at, you know, sometimes you you begin to write about things that aren't necessarily relevant to your topic. So we looked primarily at structure um, in relation. um, That's what we're looking at at the moment. And it's really turning into something very nice and very solid and very tight. And then I also work with people who are at the beginning phase who know they have a book inside them. They just don't really know what it is. They know they want to help and connect with other women. They know they want to support other people in their business area, but they They just don't really know how to go about doing that. And what I suggest with them is that they get out an A3 sheet of paper and they do a big mind dump. Um, and And I just want to make this point that this is not a tip that's unique to me. This is actually a writer's technique. Mm-hmm. So it, it, you put the title of the, or the topic of your book in the center of the page, and then you just write down everything that comes to mind that's related to that topic. Mm. And once you've got it all out, and that can take a few hours, um, what I suggest then is putting it aside for a little while and then coming back to it later with fresh eyes and fresh thinking and starting to look for the big overarching ideas. And once you can see the big overarching ideas, that could be, you know, customers, clients, um, sales, you take those out and everything else you list that relates to those big overarching ideas you list underneath them and they Liz are your chapters that's what your the overarching ideas are your chapters and everything else that you put underneath them are the ideas that you're going to write about in the chapters and there you have the start of a structure for your book wow wow that's brilliant that's um I mean you could go from nothing to to having an outline yeah 
That's it exactly. That's it exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so what what other advice do you, would you give to somebody who who wants to do this or, or thinks that they 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 might want to do it but they're afraid to start? I would just say get a nice notebook and a nice pen and start jotting down your ideas for the book and, and for the life that you want mm -hmm. because that's the whole point of this is that the book doesn't have to be something separate to your life. It should be part of the life that you're, you're dreaming for yourself. So buy a nice notebook. I'm a big fan of notebooks. <laughs> buy a nice one. Um, and then, you know, start writing. Write pages about how good it would make you to feel to write. Um, Note anything that strikes you as relevant to your topic. It's all writing. It's all good. And then when you're ready, when you have this big, you know, meaty notebook full of juicy bits about why you want to write and what you're going to write about, you start. You just start. You do this mind map and then you just take it step by step. Wow. You're making it sound very straightforward, something which would be, which makes most people, including myself, quite nervous. But you're, it, it sounds very just do this and then do this and do this i bet that you are uh, extremely inspiring to work with oh, well thank you liz but you know what i think it is very straightforward and here's the thing i've wanted to be a writer since i was a little girl and i remember i would read lots of books on writing primarily by male writers you know mm -hmm. and i would read quotes from hemingway and mm -hmm. stephen king wrote a great book on writing and they all basically talked about how difficult it was i mean i think hemingway has a has a great quote um which i don't agree with in any way but it's you know it's, it's a great quote where he says writing is easy all you do is sit down on the typewriter and bleed <laughs> 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 but to me, that's not writing. And for years and years, I thought that that was writing. Writing is so difficult. You have to be this incredibly gifted, unique person to write. Mm -hmm. And then I realized writing a book actually is really just about having a conversation with somebody. It's just about sharing your thoughts. And it can be as easy as all the other things that we do that enables us to have platforms, that enables us to get our voice out, that enables us to talk to other people. It doesn't actually have to involve a lot of, you know, bleeding. <laughs> yes, or, 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 or drug addiction and alcohol. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. You know that you can only write if you're, you know, on your own in a garage, you have no money, but you're you know, absolutely drunk. And yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah. Like <laughs> I really like your um, your new focus on on women and on on the way life is now for 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 women of a certain age. Um, uh, yeah, it's it, it's valuable. A anything else you'd like to share um, in uh, advice or encouragement for people who are thinking about thinking about writing a book? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I suppose one of the things that I, I do realize is that writing can actually be quite lonely. Mm -hmm. um, and it is good to, to try and find some kind of support, even if that's a writing group. And there are actually quite a few writing groups online. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's a, a Facebook page with other people, you know, like-minded people who want to write books, it is really good to try and find your, your tribe, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, of people who will support you in your efforts. Because, you know, Sometimes when you just, you know, you're staring at the computer screen and you can't string a sentence together and you really just want someone to say, it's okay, it's mm. okay, mm. step back from the computer, you'll get there tomorrow. You know, you need that support. So I, I would suggest that people do try and reach out and, and find others that can support them. That's great. And so what, what's next for you? What are, are you? Do you write for yourself as well or, or mainly for other clients? Well, you know what? I, I have been helped. I used to ghostwrite a lot, so I have actually written a lot of books, but not under my name. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, but now I've stepped back from that, and I am in the process of writing my own book, and I am working with other wonderful, wonderful women, helping them to write theirs. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and I also I write articles and white papers, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I just – every day I need to write. I just, I just mm -hmm. love it. I just love to sit down in front of my computer and, and start writing. So if somebody wanted to explore um, working with you, what should they do? 
Um, well, they could contact me on my website, which is um, SiobhanColgan.com. And um, I'm happy to have a, a free first consultation because I think it is really important that a person who is starting on this journey, who feels nervous, who has all those fears inside of them, they need to know that they're in, that they feel safe with the person who's going to support them in this effort. So um, I'm happy to, to offer a free consultations to any of your listeners who want to go down this path and we can see if we're a good fit together. We can have a chat have a you know a look at what you want to write about and uh, and then we can take it from there thank you i want to thank you so much siobhan colgan um, her website is siobhancolgan.com i will put the link in the show notes uh, you've been very generous with your help and advice and i really appreciate your time today thank you liz it's lovely to be here i'm liz sumner uh reminding you to be bold and thanks for listening